Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update by RRG Research for Monday the 12th of September. I'm recording this on a rather sad Friday the 9th of September. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London. Let us start, as we always do, by looking at the global indices versus the MSCI World Index. Now we have seen this week um, that the world is in fact rotating and, uh, and, the, and continuing sort of uh, trends in the relationships between the US indices and the European industries has continued uh, to expand. So what we're seeing is improvements in the US indices um, and also uh, that group on the top right there, the UKX, the FTSE 100, the Australian index and the Nikkei, um, all holding this area over on the top right in the leading quadrant. The US indices generally are close to the MSCI world index, so correlating with it, not surprising given its heavy weight in the uh, MSCI world index, but um, they're close to them there's, uh, and so there's no outperformance opportunity from them but we've got two of the US indices um, not uh, uh, with the, the rest of the group. The Russell 2000, the broadly based index has crossed uh, to the lagging quadrant and the, NIC, the uh, NASDAQ has continued uh, to be in the lagging quadrant and heading in a westerly direction so losing JDK RS ratio. In the European indices, there's been an improvement with the stocks, the, uh, the CAC and the DAX um, all pointing easterly and the DAX crossing across um, to the uh, leading quadrant. The uh, UK index, the uh, UK 100, uh, the Australian and the Nikkei, they're all far to the right, separate from the rest of the indices, uh, so with strong JDK RS ratio and generally pointedly easterly as well so they should maintain that position. What might be interesting is to pair one of these against the uh, strongly rotating, negatively rotated um, Tech 100, the uh, NASDAQ in index. We'll come back to that shortly. Now let's break this group, this um, group in the leading quadrant, the FTSE 100, the ASX 200 and the Nikkei, up a bit and see where the real opportunity lies in there. This is a weekly chart of the uh, FTSE 100 UK X index. Now what you can see is that this uh, index um, has been moving sideways really for, for a year supported by 7,000 and with a top just above 7,600 um, and um, this has been a very you know relatively tight range. Now with the whole complex of uh, world stock indices weak um, this, this moving sideways has actually uh, put it in that strong position in the leading quadrant just by not going down. So it's a relative thing that we're talking about here and uh, this one is looking good by not going down. Uh, the range is pretty established. We're in the middle of the range right now. It's holding up. And what's interesting to me is that the relative strength index here, which has marked the tops and bottoms of the range really well, is around the midpoint, um, just below 50 at the moment, neutral. And so the indication is, at the moment, is that it will continue to hold this position of stability uh, while the rest of the complex is under pressure. Now let's look at the M weekly MACD of the FTSE. Uh, something um, sort of quite meaningful has happened here. Uh, the, the blue line, which is the MACD line, and the dashed line is the signal line. And don't forget, this is 12, 26 and 9 weeks. These, this is a double smooth moving average, and it has come back to zero. So when a double smooth, the difference between two moving averages that are smoothed, um, comes to zero, the difference is zero, this is a strong message of 
flat sideways trading and it's just pointing easterly there now so this is another indication that the FTSE is going to hold um, its position at the uh, the top end of the relative strength of the group of, st of global stock indices just by being the one which seems uh, to not want to go down. Now let's look at the, uh, the NASDAQ, the NDX index. Here we've got in this weekly chart, so each bar here is a week, is a down channel. We've got nice uh, uh, three tops on that channel. Bottom is a little bit uh, less distinct, but it's definitely moving down the, downward uh, in, a, in a channel. And um, we're about mid channel uh, right now. We've got support where we are now at about 12,000. We've got resistances around the 13,000 um, here too. And then of course the crucial uh, 11,000 low, which might be taken out if we continue this pattern of lower lows. The um, the pattern here is that um, uh, we are going down, but we are um, not oversold in any way. Let's just have a look here. We're around uh, just we're about 45 on the RSI weekly RSI, uh, but the tendency is overall to continue the drift lower. So here we are, look at this in contrast to the FTSE, for example, which was all stable up here, and that would put it to the top of the list. And this one with this downward channel, clear downward channel, and uh, with only uh, really relatively uh, light support, um, uh, looking still vulnerable to lower prices. Uh, having said light support, I should, I should, um, maybe I should correct that. We have got support, it's not strong, uh, because, but it is support from 1100 here and this consolidation uh, from 2020. So there is support about, but it is moving down purposefully into the support inside the longer term down channel. So our conclusion is that we possibly have a pairs opportunity here. We've got the stability um, we like particularly the UK X because it is holding up, um, and uh, as, uh, as 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 your as one side of potential pair, and then on the other side, the weakest looking of the whole complex is the is the Nasdaq, still looking weak. Still, although it is approaching supports at the low, but the lows kept giving way, um, and it is in a strong downward trend trend this would still be our preferred uh, opportunity to pair off against the uh, UK X. I wish the very very best for the weekend and uh, thank you very much for listening from Julius and I. We'll be back to you again next week with more from RRG Research. Thank you.